All right, guys, thank you for tuning in to Next Question with Vinny and Jenna Lee, episode number 19. I'm going to give it a minute here. I'm going to drink a little water before we get rocking and rolling. All right, you get ready? I'm ready. A lot of questions. A lot of questions. You know what's crazy? What? I'm under the weather, and I was ah. praying to God that we got less questions today just so I can didn't have to yell at everybody, but... What are you going to do? Man of the people, Jay. I got the flu. I still show up to work. Then sit next to you and spit all over this sheet of paper. So guys, if I get sick, you know whose fault this. Let's get rocking. Let's get rolling. Let's go. Next question. Okay. Ready? Yes, ma'am. It's a great segue. Because it says, Vinny, I noticed you've been sick lately. This is why you've been voted the man of the people. It's what I do. I commit. I, uh, I want to know who asked that question. Vinny Soma. Great guy. Next question. <laughs> Any tips to get a one-year-old female staffy mix to stop being so jelly when anyone hugs or shows affection to her owner slash fur dad? Every time household family members yeah. or anyone hugs him, she jumps wide. It's not, it's not jealousy that you're seeing. It's control and dominance, right? So if I hug Jenna Lee and the dog jumps up, my dog's not jealous that I'm hugging Jenna Lee. My dog is trying to control the situation and say, hey, I just like this and I disagree with this and this is how I'm going to show that I disagree with it. It's absolutely unacceptable and you would immediately correct it. Now, you have two options. You use obedience to combat this. So if my dog's got a good down stay or a good place or kennel stay, I can practice that while I practice hugging people. I can use a leash and three people so we could hug and then the person over here would correct when the dog comes to jump up with a leash correction. You could also use a pet corrector. Next question. How do I stop my dog from submissive peeing? Stop acknowledging them when you first come into the house. Work on building your dog's confidence through obedience training. Next question. Uh, and not only do you not acknowledge your dog when you first come into the house, don't acknowledge your dog when you first walk into the room. Next question. What are Every time for the rest of your life. Are you ready? Next question. <laughs> what are some toys you suggest for a puppy that loves to chew on hard plastic? Our six-month-old lab mix loves to chew my daughter's small plastic toys and isn't interested in any of the toys we've gotten. We've tried Kongs, balls, ropes, and soft toys. Nylabone makes a few really good chew toys. Some of them have flavor to it. I absolutely love Nylabone. Um, bully sticks are great. Your dog's getting at the age where the bully sticks are gonna go through pretty fast, so you know you can use those for like another month or so. Um, I love soup bones as well. Um, those are absolutely phenomenal. Next question. When in training mode, Maggie mm -hmm. will come on command every yes, time. However, when we are outside, she ignores me. When can what can I do to fix this behavior? So there's a gap between when the dog... Okay, good. We almost lost connection there for a second. This happens a lot. So her, her question was, um, the dog listens well in training mode and then doesn't listen when they're not in training mode. You, did, you need to be in training mode more frequently when your dog doesn't know that. So what I mean is, let your dog go outside with a long leash often. Um, when your dog is, when you're ready to have your dog come in, say come and give it a, a very firm 30 foot leash pop and praise the second that your dog looks at you. So what we're rewarding here is the eye contact that my dog is giving me, not necessarily the fact that they're coming back before that. So as soon as I say come and my dog looks, good. And then the dog goes, holy shit, I'm gonna get rewarded. I should run back to that immediately. But you need to use that long leash. The only other way to do that is to switch from a long leash to an e-collar. Next question. Please drop some tips on how to get a puppy to stop biting. I know she does it for attention and she's them. teething, but it hurts. Yeah, well, but you gotta engage them, right? So if your puppy's biting you, that means you're not doing something with them productive. What you guys have to understand is if a puppy's ever biting you, that means they have energy that they're using for something bad. Get up, get food in your hand, kibble, and start to train them, or give them a bully stick, or give them something that's super engaging, or go play ball, but use the energy that your dog's given you and start to use it more productive. The problem is I don't want to get off the couch, but that's what we have to do. Next question. My dog is almost 11. She's a pit lab mix. Awesome. She's great with people, but yeah. is aggressive towards other dogs. Okay. Is she too old and set in her ways to correct this behavior? She's been this way since I got her seven years ago. So here's, here's my question for you. If you set realistic expectations, your 11-year-old dog can get around other dogs, but I'm not saying that your 11-year-old dog is going to be a dog who's going to go to the dog park or the dog house and play with other dogs. That's fine. What I have to understand is my expectation is to get this dog with the ability to not freak out, and yes, we can get there. It doesn't matter the age. Um, but you also have to advocate for your dog. Your dog feels uncomfortable playing with other dogs. Cool, we're not gonna play for now. But we will get closer on lead in a controlled setting. Next question. Dogs always need, whoa. Dogs always need yes, jobs, especially my working breed, Australian cattle dogs. Yes, ma'am. We kind of, what kind of regular jobs, not herding cattle because I have none, do you suggest? And how do I 
go about teaching them these jobs? So that's a great question. And a job can be anything, right? So a job doesn't mean it has to be the same thing all the time either. A job, obedience training is a job because it's a task that my dog has to focus. Engagement is the job, right? Where my dog is paying attention to me. Let me fix this camera. I don't like how I look in that camera. Now I look great. Um, engagement to me would be um, a job. So obedience training, leash walking, you could do agility training, scent training, find it, treadmill, anything like that is a job where my dog's gonna focus. Don't worry about doing the same thing all the time. Just get your dog to focus more frequently. Next question. My sister's dog Holy is shit, very cautious. 20 pages, we're just two. <laughs> my sister's dog is very cautious yep. around her newborn and growls slash barks. Your dog. Yeah. Is there anything I can do until I get you to see her? Yeah, dog's gotta be on leash around the kid. I would muzzle train the dog and I would start to immediately crate train the dog. So this way you cannot let this you can't let the baby get too close it's just not acceptable um but yeah give us a call and i'll take care of it next question i have a new yorkie puppy that is 10 weeks old and Love two it. and a half pounds uh -huh. my other three rescue dogs will not have anything to do with her mm -hmm. they even show teeth and snap at her she just right, wants yeah. to follow them and play it surprises me as i brought them all in as rescues and never had a problem i even doggy sit for others and again it's never been an issue i don't want to push her on them because i'm afraid that we'll just cause more issues any tips you can yeah. provide would be great cool uh use a leash a drag leash in the house with your puppy and don't let your puppy bug the older dogs when the older dogs are ready they're going to want to play but your puppy is annoying them just by simply walking because she's so young and she's going to be like this when she comes up and she doesn't really know what's going on she just wants to be curious and play but it's your job to say, hey, come on, play with me instead and engage with me. Your pup, your dogs will accept the dog. And don't read into it like, I, you know, we've rescued these dogs. Why is it? It doesn't matter. Right? That we look into like too much human emotion. It, not all that is bull crap. Um, the big thing is that your dogs don't want to play with a 10-week-old kid. My question to you is, does a grandma want to hang out with their grandchild all freaking day long? No. Some do. No, four hours is great. Get the hell out of my house. Next question. <laughs> New dog owner. Yes, ma'am. So many different kinds of dog collars and leashes. What's the best for a puppy? Uh, that's a great question. A uh, leash, uh, inside leash, get a six foot, extremely thin cat leash. Outside leash, get a, um, a half inch uh, leather leash, four to six feet. They're great. They're great leashes. And you can get any buckle collar for now. It's standard. It's fine. Especially for a young dog. No big deal. Get them used to wearing it though. Next question. Puppy gets very distracted by passing cars, people, sounds, etc. He will stop walking and stare. How to, how to get him to focus and keep walking when he's on leash? Okay, so two things. Number one, someone just said dead. Did I say something funny? I don't know. I don't know either. Stacy, what did I say? Next thing. Uh, <laughs> puppy gets very distracted by passing cars, people, sounds. How do I get him to focus on walk? So you got to get him to heal. So if your dog is fixating on other things, that means he's not healing at all. He's not paying attention. The word heal... And it's overused. It just means follow. Is he engaging with you or is he engaging with a road? He's engaging with a road. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say my dog pulls a little bit on the leash to begin with. you got to fix the pulling. you got to fix all of that. And the way you do that is with a training collar. Start to do five-minute intervals of obedience training on your walk where your dog has to. Um, immediately turn direction with you as soon as you – so quick 180s. I want to walk north, say heel, spin, tight turn back. So my dog goes, whoa, where are we going? Where are we going? Sit, stop, treat, and continue. Next question. Four hours, get out of my house. Oh, okay. Right. I'm hysterical. We have a 30-foot leash we have worked outdoors <laughs> with. Yes. Sit slash lay down and stay as well as free and come. What other type of training can we utilize for this leash? Uh, so this is a great question. Hiking. 30-foot leash. Uh, I go on a hike. Use it. Let it drag on the ground. Take your dogs out on a hike. They get too far away. I'll take a 30-foot leash and I'll take a pink piece of tape and I'll take 20 feet away. Uh, when I get a new dog, we'll go on a hike. If I ever see that pink piece of tape because the dog's starting to get 20 feet in front of me, I just step on it and say, nope. So this way the dog goes, okay, that's way too far. They come back and we continue to go until eventually my dog has a perimeter around me. You could also teach don't run out the door and give your dog a, a shit ton of space because you know you can catch them if they, if they do run out the door with the door wide open. Um, and then random recall, getting your dog to come to you at a church parking lot, things like that. Next question. Could you use it as like a perimeter for your yard? You could, absolutely, absolutely. Like to not leave your yard? It's a great, great dude, give yourself a Okay, yes, my five month old golden doodle is off. Awesome at yes. not going potty in her crate, but Good. as soon as you open the crate door, she pees immediately when she steps out. The crate is less than 10 feet from the door. What do I do? How old is the dog? Do Definitely. we know? F five months. As soon as she opens up the door, the dog pees. Like steps out of the crate and pees. Are you talking to the dog? 
And, and what I would say is maybe wait another minute or two before you open up the door. Don't make, don't make one sound to your dog. One sound at all. So make sure that you're not acknowledging them at all. And whenever you're ready, you open up the door and run right out to the bathroom right away. Keep it calm. Sav, I want that picture of your say it once dog turning put up on, uh, on Instagram today. Thank you. Next question. Hmm. Rachel was out Sunday and Remy did great, especially with the new prong collar. Nice. Yeah, yeah. We also are working on recall, focus, and heal today. Good. However, after a very productive walk and training session, we were headed, we were heading into our driveway when the neighbor dog came over and wanted to play. Remember, he loves to play with this dog, mm -hmm. starting to, starting to growl and lunge and get aggressive. We busted it up and took Remy inside immediately, but don't know why he did so this. One, Any thoughts? Yeah, when one dog's on leash and another another dog is off leash, they almost feel threatened. Uh, this happens more frequently than you think. If you know your dog's friendly with that dog, typically I would just pop the leash off and let him go play, especially if you're in your, in your own yard. That's another thing to think about. You're in your own yard, another dog runs off leash in your yard, they're going to feel a little bit more defensive, mainly because they're in a, in, a, in a really calm place and then this thing busts into the yard. Holy shit, what do I do? Even if they know them, that's just not the proper way to be greeting. Um, so just something to think about. Not that big of a deal, but make sure that we do get our dog around this dog again with a productive, in a good way. Um, you know, let them play and, and get them together maybe for a structured walk, if, especially if you're neighbors. Next question. We have a house full of hounds, so I know they have a nose for trouble. A certain coon hound has decided to dig his way to freedom under the fence. Would the penny can be a deterrent? Deterrent? Oh, oh, deterrent. <laughs> I'm so sick, I can't take this. Or should we use a different tactic? Um, so here's the thing. So say your dog's digging underneath the fence. Uh, fence. The big thing is you need to catch your dog in the act. And you need to catch your dog in the act almost as soon as they start digging. Right. right? And there's only a few ways to do this. There's only a few ways to correct this. Number one, by the way, old school people used to take cayenne pepper and throw it right where they would dig. And the dog would say, okay, I'm not going to go here. What's the problem with that? Eh, there's a 50-50 chance the dog just says, all right, I won't dig here. Okay. That's what looks great, right? right. But if, if they don't, then hey, you wasted 25 cents of cayenne pepper and it worked out beautifully. Um, so how could you correct this? You could. You could take the can, yeah, you could throw it against the fence so it startles the dog so they go, shit, don't dig anymore. But you got to be really good with your timing. You could use a, a long leash, an e call or something like this to get your timing down perfectly so we can correct it right away. But you should manually go out with your dog for the next month to make sure that they're not going to dig. Because the one time that you don't go out with them and you don't watch them and they do dig, they learn the behavior, you just kicked your problem three more weeks down the road. Because now it, you, you've almost let it happen. Next question. I know you've, recommend, you've recommended deer antlers for chewing, but Lovely. how would you feel about a dog having that in a crate with him for nine hours? That's fine. I, I honestly don't think dogs need it in their crate for nine hours. I think the dog should be completely fine, especially an adult dog is fine home alone for nine hours, but that means I got to do my due diligence before I leave, right? So here's the thing, guys. There's some days where I'm gone for 11 hours. That's a long freaking time for three adult dogs to be gone. Now, a lot of the time we have a good dog walker who comes to let the dog out, but sometimes I don't. So that means my dogs are going to be home alone for 11 hours. That means I get up an extra hour and a half earlier to do an extra hour and a half of training because I know my dogs are going to need it. You have to do it before. The antler can stay in the crate. That's fine. It's not going to chip away. Make sure it's a big antler, though, a good size antler, not a small one. Next question. My eight-month-old GSD tore up my bed today and couch two days prior. Usually crate trained, but my parents were home. She has had no behavioral issues before this, but over 3K in furniture in one week, I've about lost it. Any insight? Thanks. Why is she not in the crate? Do Her we... parents are home. Must be like visiting or something? Mm -hmm. uh, put the dog back in the crate. Never give your dog freedom until your dog has earned it. Cause you, yeah. And, and if you have to, buy a really expensive crate. So some people actually are unfortunate. They have to buy a nice crate. Like most of us can go to Petco and get a shitty crate for 45 bucks. And the dogs go, okay, I'll just stay in here and it's fine. But some of us got to buy a really nice gunner kennel or impact crate. You know, it's four, five, six, seven hundred dollar crate. But the good news is that lasts your lifetime. You know what I mean? But you might have to actually do that if your dog is escaping. You're, it doesn't sound like your dog's escaping. It just seems like your dog's anxious because there's change, because there's new people in the house. It's typical. But make sure, make sure you don't give them any freedom at all. Uh, oh, eight months old too. Yes, no freedom at all. Next question. Okay. Yes, My two-year-old Roddy Bear. Yes has always been fine in his crate even when I'm gone eight hours for work. He has suddenly started vomiting in his crate every Jesus. time I leave the house, even for just an hour. Mm -hmm. I've tried getting him used to it again, but 
by putting him in there while I'm home, but he doesn't do it then. Only when he hears me leave. Do you think he is developing anxiety? And if so, what can I do? And I didn't extend it. That's okay. Yeah, so this is interesting. Your dog's vomiting in the crate every time you leave the house, even if it's just for an hour. Um, you're doing good by practicing leaving the house, and, 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 and you need to continue to do that. But you also need to start putting the dog in the crate when you're home too, just to make sure your dog's comfortable going in there as well. I would definitely feed the dog into the crate. Make sure you're feeding the dog in the morning and in the evening, not just one meal. Um, that's interesting. I actually want you, I, I know who this is. I, I think I see them tomorrow. Um, give me a call tomorrow morning and we're definitely gonna go. That's an interesting question. We might have to come back to that. Next question. We rescued oh, a no. six-year-old Sharpay slash bully mix in February and he occasionally yeah. pees on our couch and then lays in it all day while we're gone. I'm assuming this is because he was in a kennel and grew used to laying in his pee slash poop. We are working on the potty training issue and crate training, but could use tips on training a dog to stay off the furniture. All right, so to get a dog to stay off the furniture is very, very simple. Number one, um, when you're home, never allow them. That's easy, but when you're not home, what do you do? Well, when you're not home, they make all different types of devices to put on your couch, right? They make this simple, um, it's a big plastic uh, square and it has these little, I'm gonna call them spikes. They look like little cones. You, can, you, you wouldn't wanna walk on it, it's just uncomfortable. It wouldn't penetrate or hurt, but you can actually take those and just put them on the furniture and call it a day. 99% of the time, something like that fixes it right away. They're simple, they're cheap, they're like 19 bucks, and they're big, right? They're four by four. So just throw them on all your couches. If you need it, they do make things that make noise when the dog jumps up on it. And if I absolutely needed to, I would take it a step further and I would, cor excuse me, I would correct with some sort of startle technique. So I'd leave the house. You could use an e-collar, you could use the, uh, the penny can, just something to get them to go, oh God, you know, I should never get up here. But I would just buy the plastic thing and call it a day. 19 bucks, buy four of them. Next question. We moved about four months ago. Awesome. My three-year-old Shorty now nice. barks frantically and paces for a minimum of two minutes whenever any family member leaves. It doesn't matter if we leave his favorite toys for him or put something with our scent in his bed or even if one of us stays with him. He always gets very anxious and lays close to anyone he thinks is going to leave. How do we correct this behavior? Number one, stop acknowledging him when somebody else leaves. So <clears throat> if you left my house and generally it was my dog and she was freaking out and I went, hey, it's okay, she's just, she's coming back. Now I'm rewarding the fact that my dog is acting like a psycho, right? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. The other thing is when you come home, make sure no one acknowledges the dog. So it's not a big deal when I leave, but it's also not a big deal when I come back into the house. Lastly, if I need to, make sure you're engaging your dog in some sort of way to do something else. So you leave my house or if somebody leaves my house, dog freaks out. I'm allowing it to happen. Does that make sense? Because yeah. of my lack of engagement with the dog, I'm allowing it to happen. Well, Vinny, what do you want me to do? Anything. Walk with me, sit down, stay, place, kennel, something to get the dog fixated on you until we're ready to just put the dog in stay and somebody can walk in and out without it being a problem. Also, have people leave frequently. Leave more often than you typically do. Go outside for five minutes, come back. Go outside for five minutes, come back. Get your dog used to it. Repetition aids retention. Wow. That's a great saying by me. Next question. I stole that. <laughs> My two-year-old rescue pup came from a terrible situation, but was calm and friendly with strangers when we adopted her. Since she's been with us two months, she has gotten progressively more difficult when we have visitors, including close friends and family that have met her multiple times. I have to crate her or keep her on a leash at all times when we have a guest in the house. She barks in a scary way and lunges at our guests. And it can last hours or even days when we have an overnight guest. Ooh, she Jesus. gets a lot of attention and exercise. Is she territorial or scared of people? Could be both, right? And that just depends on what she's showing you. So if your dog is barking at guests um, and lunging, the good news is you're using the crate and you're using the leash. So you're already taking productive steps. But when we use the leash, if my dog's still barking, so say I put a leash on a dog and my dog's still barking at my guest, now the leash is ineffective and it lost power. So if I use a leash, I have to match it with a training collar, right? A Hermspring or Prong collar or a Starmark collar, anything like that. I have to match it with that. So now I can actually control my dog. I don't wanna to have to pull back. I want a simple correction and my dog goes, oh God, I can't do that anymore. No one is ever allowed to pet your dog until your dog does two things. Walks calmly and willingly to the person. So I can't come pet you because my dog clearly doesn't like that. But once you come calmly and willingly to me, willingly to me all the affection in the world. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Next question. Our one and a half year old 
lab still mm -hmm. pees and jumps when people comes to visit, which isn't often. How do I get her to stop? But that goes back to the beginning. I'm sorry, what happened? You've already answered this. Oh, I'm a genius. <laughs> Earlier. Our one and a half year old lab still pees and jumps when people come to visit, which isn't often. How do I get her to stop? Bring people over more frequently, right? So once again, repetition age of attention. No one should pet your dog when they come into the house. Keep it super low, uh, low key. The jumping is all on you to fix, not on your guest, but not acknowledging the dog is on the guest. You have to make sure that they understand that. Um, and how do you fix the jump in? Well, you, you need to actually start taking, uh, once again, the leash and the training color, just like we talked about. And if they come over, you correct your dog. But the big thing is the peeing here. Why is the peeing happen? Because we're getting our dog so wound up that they're getting to a point that it's unhealthy, right? It's super, super unhealthy. Um, so that's just something to watch. Can they Don't, take a walk before? 100% to chill them out. Oh my the God, yeah, comes. big time. And make sure everybody sits down at the kitchen table, not the couch. I love bringing a guest to the kitchen table and not to the couch right away. Why is that important? Because when I sit at a table, I look at my human being, I have a table here and I don't even acknowledge the dog. You sit at a couch, the dog's right in my personal space, I reach out, I talk to, I pet, I reinforce bad behavior, or I'm putting myself in right in their face, which they don't like anyways. So bring all of your guests to a kitchen counter or a kitchen table. Next question. We are about a week into our training and are doing great. As we Love push it. through the rain and snow, yep. is there a too cold to take my 10 pound terrier oh, and yeah. 95 pound Labradane yeah. out Labradane. for our training yeah. walks? And is it okay to take them during a light rain or snow? Yeah, 100%. Light rain and snow is great, right? So for me, anything over 25, I don't even question. We're going out for a walk. Your 10 pound dog, you're probably gonna have to suit up like a son of a gun, you know, with a nice thick sweater, coat, whatever. Uh, but over, over over 25, I really don't guess. The only thing that bothers me is the salt, right? Um, so when it gets super salty, we use Musher's Wax on their paw pads, which is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. Um, the only dog that I own that gets, um, uh, that paw pads hurt from the salt is Thurman, so I always load him up real nice with the Musher's. Um, but yeah, it's just something to watch. But on really shitty days, what do I do? Well, I do more obedience training, treadmill training, or field trips, uh, Home Depot and Lowe's. Uh, I love that. We also use uh, Burl Lake Park. I love going to Burl yeah. Lake Park on their top field, and I'll do a boatload of obedience training up there. Next question. Next question. Sorry. How do I Next stop? Question. <laughs> Next question. Next question. I'm sick. Stop. How do I stop my pup from scratching at the doors inside the house? FYI, he just uh, spit all over me, so if I'm sick, it's for real his fault. <laughs> How many times have I called you to tell you I'm sick? Over the Too time? many. I've called so many people just go, I'm sick. I'm sick. So my question is, do, just, do men naturally get more sick than women? No, or, you guys just suck at being sick because you're big sissies. I just think we get sicker. I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? What's the question? Next question. Anyway, how do I stop my pup from scratching at the doors inside the house? So like scratching, right? Like if you were to lock out the store and they sit there and scratch on your door. Or, oh, you mean to let them in? I need more no, context. Inside, inside the house. Is the human inside or the dog's inside? How do I stop my pup from scratching at the doors inside, inside the, the house? house? Oh, well, don't let them out when they scratch. And only from now on, make your dog sit and wait every time you get to go outside. Every single time you get to go outside, you have to sit and stay until I tell you free. If my dog goes up there and they're going to continue to scratch, I'll limit your freedom. You don't get to go to that door anymore. I'll put a baby gate up so you don't get to go there. Or I'll put a leash on you. Or I'll manually, you know, I'll just tell you no for scratching at the door. And if my nose knot's working, that means that I'm doing something wrong in other parts of my training. Start to use more obedience for this as well. Next question. How do I get my dog to stop barking at every single noise he hears outside when we're in the house? I have curtains on all the windows that I keep shut or he'll just look out the window and bark at everything he sees. But even with them closed, he barks at every truck, person, dog, or anything else that makes noise that goes by our house at all hours of the day slash night. How do I train has... him to stop reacting to every single noise he hears? So here's the thing, guys. Barking is not a problem. Barking is an outcome of a bigger problem, which we would just call anxiety or stress or pent-up energy, whatever label you want to put on it. Why is my dog barking at every noise that he hears? Because he's stressed out of his mind. Because there's a fundamental flaw in my relationship with my dog, and I'm not giving him everything that he needs. I'm not giving him enough physical activity. I'm not giving him enough mental activity. And before I correct the barking, I need to make sure that I give him everything first. So what I would ask is what? I would ask that I make sure that I double up, and if you're not doing any at all, triple up on my obedience exercise and um, leash walking. And I would even do a little bit more of fun games in the house uh, too. 
as my dog's obedience gets better, then I can start to use that for the barking. The, the problem is that, say I tell you a way to correct the barking and you don't do anything else, you can't correct anxiety. I can't correct anxiety. I've trained 8,000 dogs, I can't correct anxiety. I can get rid of it though, by putting it into a productive manner. So don't forget that. A lot of that is stress because we're not doing enough engagement with our dog. Next question. He scratches at our bedroom and laundry doors when they are closed. Oh yeah, just tell him no. And here, listen, uh, Lisa, leave the leash on. Let him go do it one time. Correct him one time after you tell him no. That'll be the end. Right then and there. Every time. That's it. That'll all it take. And I, the Dobie. Oh yeah. Next question. My dad bought me my first lesson for Christmas to come get my Woo! dog trained. It's a good. It's a good dad. It's I'm great worried dad. when I go there, she is going to growl at you and won't let you come near her. Okay. When I went to another trainer, he said we couldn't work on anything until she stopped growling. Is this something you're okay with working around? Listen, if now, generally, I got two problems with this question. Problem number one is don't ever freaking doubt me again. That is a sin. You need to go to church and repent. Problem number two is if. I didn't work with dogs because they growled at me. I would have... You wouldn't have a job. I would have no clients. <laughs> I actually talked... Somebody asked me a question. I was dealing with some sort of aggression. They said, Do you, have, you, you know, have you seen this before? The only thing I realistically see every day of my life is some sort of behavioral bad mistake. Aggression, food aggression, etc. Why does the dog growl at me? Well, because the dog doesn't have a, a, a trust and we, you don't understand what to do. Now, there's a process. Now, the only thing that I ask is if there is a dog with a bite history who we believe is, uh, is going to bite, that we muzzle train the dog first. It makes it easy. I have a simple YouTube video on how to do it. Once you get a, a muzzle on a dog, we can start to really test and see how close, what can we do, so on and so forth. I have absolutely no problem with that at all. I see it every day of my life and I can't wait to help. Next question. I have a question. Yeah, dude. What's up? When they growl, is it most of the time because they're scared? No, uh, it's hit or miss. Okay. Uh, either way, so that's a great question. If my kid is nervous in school, does that mean he gets to go around the hallway and punch the kids in the no. face? Heck no. Just because you're nervous doesn't give you a, a meaning to growl, but it does add a huge um, mental thing for us to think about. Okay, my dog's nervous. Why is he nervous? But don't ever do that again. It's still unacceptable. A lot of people with nervous dogs tend to baby them even when they growl. It's okay, honey. He's friendly. It's like, well... What the hell are you doing? You're telling them it's good to growl at me. Stop doing that. Uh, that's a great That's a great point by you, Jay. Wow. You're getting better at this. Hey. 19 episodes in. Your reading's been <laughs> flawless today. Almost. Yeah. Almost flawless. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Uh, someone asked me to ask you a question. What is your favorite uh, breed of dog? <laughs> Shut up. I'm not. Is it Airedale by chance? I hate you. Next question. I hate you. Braxton has been nudging my hand on our walks. Is he just... Checking to make sure. Yeah, he's I'm engaging with you. He's oh, or he's demanding a treat, right? And so don't ever give him a treat after that. But that's a, when a dog is going to nudge you on a walk. That means they want something from you. The good news is they want to engage with you, which is huge. These are the easiest dogs to train because they want to train. Start training more frequently with your dog. Next question. What kind of treadmill do you use for your dogs? Uh, it's like a Nordic Trek human treadmill. Um, they, they do make great dog treadmills. Um, dog Pacer is a good one. Simple and easy, small, light. Um, I like those. We use those frequently. Um, as soon as we get this room up here, I'll probably have five or six dog pacers. Um, but yeah, it doesn't really matter. Next question. How do I make my dog not freak out in the car barking and jumping when we pass dogs? Can I tell you something? What? <laughs> Jennifer Ricard commented, let it go video about the Airedale. Yes, mom! It's, it's never going to go away. <laughs> it's never going to go away. <laughs> Michelle's asked, what's your favorite Mimi? <laughs> uh, Next question. You didn't answer it. What was it? How do I make my dog not freak out in the car barking and jumping when we pass dogs? Okay, cool. So number one is, are we confining space? So dogs who bark a lot in the car tend to run back and forth and up and back, which is really... Uh, is really bad. So if my dog barks a lot in the car, um, we'll put him in the kennel and say, oh, cool, I'll put a crate in the car and you can go in the car. So this way you can't move as much and you can't do anything, which is phenomenal. Um, another really good way to go about this is take two people into the car. If my dog is perfect on leash and really good with a prong collar, really good with a leash, I'll put the second person in the back seat, put him on a leash and prong collar. And as soon as my dog starts to fix it on a dog, I give a verbal warning, very light. No. They don't listen, consequence. And my dog, and just a little leash correction. And my dog goes, oh wow, okay, now you have my attention. But once you do it with two people, then you can, then you can eventually just start to drive the car. And if they get out of line, just say no. And it transitions real nice. Limit the space and limit the freedom in the car. 
Too many people have dogs who pace all over the place when they drive and it's obnoxious. Uh, and no dog on your freaking lap when you drive, please, for the love of God. Next question. <laughs> okay, it's two part. How to, how do you get, how to get dog oh, not scared of treadmill? Okay, so don't worry about turning the treadmill on while the dog's on it. Most people think that you just put them on and hit the button and the dog's gonna go. A lot of dogs are super nervous of the fact that they're jumping on some, remember, treadmills have shock, right? So when my dog jumps up and he feels that shock, they get nervous that, oh my God. Right. Yeah, because it's not stable. So you get the dog going up, treat, off. No treat coming off. Up, treat, off. Up, treat, off. Once my dog's ready for that, then we can do sit, down, sit, treat. And then we do all this sort of stuff. And then eventually with two people, one person in front of the treadmill, the second person on the leash, I'll turn the treadmill on at 0.6 mile an hour. That's typically the slowest a treadmill will go and get them comfortable just walking. Um, it, that's, that's how I would go about the treadmill. Second part is how long on the treadmill? There's no limit. So Thurman uh, will do 45, he did like 47 minutes tonight. Um, he does those little, the like, treadmills come with like settings. Thurman mm -hmm. does this uh, setting, it's like 46 and a half minutes, something like that. But it changes elevation and speed, which keeps him engaged. Zena will do about 10 minutes. Um, she, I'm, she doesn't love it. Uh, to a point that Thurman loves it. Right. She does, She just wants the food. The only reason she's going on is because she's good. Th Thurman would do it without food. He just likes going on it. Next question. How does my dog, female, hump other dogs when they're playing? Oh, why? Why does my dog, female, hump other dogs when they're playing? She's excited or she's trying to dominate. That's the only two reasons. When dogs get super aroused, remember, excitement is arousal. When dogs get super aroused, Oh my God! And then they just hump out of pure excitement. Sometimes it's play, but sometimes it's controlling to say, hey, I want to dominate this particular thing. You have to look at the other body language that your dog's displaying. If your dog is um, uh, ears pinned forward, super serious, ooh, that's bad, right? But if your dog's like ears, ears back, happy to lucky face, hump, the other dog, you know, gets them off and they go right into a play, well, then you can let it go minutely as long as it doesn't bother the other dog. If it becomes a serious thing, though, you're going to have to be the one to tell them to stop it. Next question. This one's cut off. Yes, uh, My dog is scared of people. I've tried walking her and wearing her out, but it only does so much. Okay. I'm not sure what the... All right. So my dog is scared of people. I've tried walking her and wearing her out. Well, the thing that you need to do is not have people come to your house only. You need to start taking your dog out in public more frequently and do obedience training in public. So when I talk about obedience training, it, once again, it's just engagement between me and my dog. So the outside world becomes nothing. So my dog starts to focus more on me. So this is where I would go to a church parking lot first and do obedience training, master it. Then I would go to a Lowe's parking lot, master it. Then I would go inside Lowe's, make sure no one ever pets my dog. And every single time you walk somewhere and you see somebody, hey, how's it going, dog? Gonna sit. Oh, good girl. Oh yeah, thank you so much. All right, you have a great day. You communicate with everybody so your dog learns that it's fine. Then when somebody comes into your house, you do the same exact thing. Leash on, training collar on, we go through the same exact way. No one pets my dog ever because my dog does not like it until I say it's okay. Next question. Do you change your usual training methods for dogs who have been abused? Uh, yes and no. Do I change my training methods? So the, remember, our training methods change dog to dog. It's all personality based, right? So it's not like, all right, I'm gonna put a prong collar on every dog that I see. No, that's not true, right? There's so many different equations and so many different things that are gonna happen. Um, what I would say, for a dog that's abused, and here's the other thing, I, a lot of people rescue a dog, and the dog was probably abused. A lot of people rescue a dog and they think the dog was abused. They're like, oh, was he abused? And most times the dog was neglected more than abused. He was in a shit place and mentally neglected. You know, And when you have a dog like that, you have to just work on getting them to, to build confidence. Um, the easiest way to build confidence is to put a dog in a position where they know what they should and shouldn't be doing. Once again, you go to work, no one tells you what to do, you freak out internally because you feel uncomfortable. Right. You go to work and someone says, do this, 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 I feel really good because now I know what to do and then I get rewarded for doing it. Remember when somebody comes up to you at work and goes, you never hear this because I never tell you, but someone goes, hey, you did great today, right? Well, when someone does that and says, hey, you did great today, you go, oh, Jesus, I'm the greatest. But if it's half-hearted half and you didn't really deserve it, then right. you don't feel it anyways. So yes, we do train our change our training methods, but it's not the same for every dog anyways. Next question. Help for tip, helpful tips for boarding your dog overnight in a kennel for the first time. Beautiful, get them to the kennel. So we, we do, how often do we do this? This is one of my favorite things about Jenna Lee because she's the greatest human being of all time, half-hearted. Uh, if you're gonna leave on January 30th, 
On January 5th, I would have you bring the dog for one overnight stay. On January 12th, I would have you bring the dog for one overnight stay. So on January 30th, my dog is looking forward to come to this place and just runs away from the human, goes right into the kennel, says, okay, put me in here and let me play. Um, or let me get with the other ones. Also find a really good kennel that fits your dog's needs. There's a boatload of different types of kennels. Um, and if you have any questions on that, shoot us a message. Thank you so much. Next question. How can I tell my how can I tell if my puppy biting is play or aggressive? How do I stop it? Uh, most likely it's going to be play, but there is a you know there is aggressive play, especially if it's a young dog. If it's over food or you trying to take something away from it, then it's a problem because now at that point it's resource guarding, which is something that we can't have. But say um, your your puppy is just biting you firmly, well you need to do one of three things: you redirect through training or um, any, any sort of engagement activity. You redirect through a bone or you correct it. And the way you can correct, there's a million ways to correct depending on what your puppy's doing. One of the easiest ways to tell if your puppy's biting aggressive is take a video and post it on here. And we, you know, yeah. we, or put it on your Instagram story and tag it. Is this aggressive? People do that frequently and I'll just answer it right on there. Next question. Can you use any treadmill with a dog? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Next question. 16 week old GSD, any Enrichment tips for working dogs on rainy days. Enrichment? Isn't that the word? That's it. That's the word. Yeah. All right. <laughs> hey Google, what's enrichment mean? <laughs> <laughs> enrichment. I think that means something different. Uh, engagement tips. I don't know. So here's 60 weeks. It's rainy outside. Here's what I would do. I would get a jacket and I would go for a walk. Amen. But I would also do. Um, find it training. I would use like any type of scent training, any type of sit down, stay, come. Then I would start to, after I did all that done, then I would do stupid trick training, touch, spin between my legs, anything like that to get my dog focused on me is great. There's no such thing as too much, by the way, as long as you hammer on the good stuff, then add all the other jazz in later. Next question. My dog barks over anything can be the fridge door has mm -hmm. only gotten worse I, since having baby. Well, the reason why it got worse when you had a kid is because your uh, your one on one time with your dog went Shit. down significantly, but the anxiety and stress in the house went up tremendously. You need to either a do more with your dog or hire someone to come in and do more with your dog because they're stressed out. Your dog's barking because they're anxious. They're anxious because they're getting a lack of uh, exercise. Next question. Why is my dog attacking shovels and leaf blowers when I'm using them? I know he's afraid. So who said this? Uh, why is my dog attacking shovels and leaf blowers? He's not afraid. Um, he's attacking them. Um, so what I would say is he, the reason he's doing it is because you're allowing it. And the reason we're allowing it is because we're telling ourselves he's afraid. People do this frequently. They go, oh, he's afraid of the vacuum. Meanwhile, his tail is straight up in the air. He's grabbing it and he's shaking it to the ground, trying to kill it. Why is he doing that? Because I'm not stopping him productively. The easiest thing, so people actually get really pissed when I do this at their house. Like they have a dog who attacks a vacuum. Perfect, let's go out on a walk, we'll fix the walk. Let's come into the house, leave the training collar and leash on, let me get the vacuum. I take the vacuum and I vacuum the house with no power on, with my dog healing next to me. Get the dog used to it. The second they fixate on it, they're not allowed to, remember, I'm not even gonna allow my dog to look at the vacuum. You don't look at it, there's no reason, right? There's no reason for my dog to look at the vacuum. So the dog looks, no, looks away, good. Sit, treat. Dog looks, no, continue to look, leash pop, dog goes, can't do that. Next thing, sit, good, that's what we want. Now, as we go throughout the, uh, the house with the vacuum, then I would turn it on, same exact thing, but now my dog gets more aroused, so I, my correction would be a little bit firmer. You could do the same thing with the shovel or the leaf blower. The problem with the leaf blower is gonna take two people. Vacuum is easy, it takes one person. Leaf blower is probably gonna be a little bit trickier because it's a big ass thing. Next question. My dog can no longer sit comfortable. Com Durable. This also goes back to the thing, just because my kid is nervous in school doesn't mean you get to punch kids in the face. Does that make sense though? Yes. So we put too many like, and the reason that we do this is, uh, I'm not even sure, uh, to be honest, I'm not sure, but we do this too frequently where we go, you know, he's afraid, he's nervous, he's growling, I don't care. Stop the behavior and correct it and don't worry about Oh my God, is, you know, did I break him? No, you didn't break him. You have to just correct the behavior. Your dog's gonna be completely fine. Just, you know, th that's the way that I would look at it. Next question. Okay, my dog can no longer sit comfortably. That's bad. <laughs> that's just bad. Hey guys, how can I adjust stay? You've been practicing for three minutes. I tried to give you extra time. <laughs> say it one more time, I can't, next question. He knew it from a sit. 
Com- What's that word? Comfortably. <laughs> now I can't say it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I could no longer say comfortably. Okay, comfortably. How can I just stay? He knew it. Let's go to timeout. Go in your crate. Go in your crate. Kennel. Get a water. This is, this is what I deal with. I'm sick. I got the flu. I got the man flu and I got to deal with this on a regular basis. My dog can no longer say comfortably. How can I just stay? He knew it from a sit. Uh, just practice down a lot, right? So if he's, um, if he's old, if, I know this dog, he's older, which means he doesn't like to sit because his bones are getting older. Practice down a lot. The more you practice down, the easier that stay will be in front of a down. And don't worry about the fact that my old dog, his sit stay is getting worse. It happens, it's not that big of a deal. Next question. Tips to help with nipping of an eight week old puppy. Redirect through training or redirect uh, through a bully stick or something like that. Use the energy that your dog is giving you and then as soon as you're done training, put him in the crate. Leash walking with reactive dog, no e-collar. Prong collar, right? So every dog can walk past another dog. The only variable is the distance, right? So if if I have a reactive dog and I put him on a prong collar, I know I can walk 50 feet away. Then I know I could walk 40, 30, 20, and I continue to get closer as my dog's willing me to willing to get more. You don't need an e-collar. Very very frequently, frequently do we use an e-collar for reactivity because you can use uh, a prong collar and engagement exercises to get my dog closer and closer and closer to another dog. Um, then again, I would never walk into a scenario like some people um, will say, "Hey, I can't use this, 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 this." Yeah, but you're closing yourself off to so much, right? I never walk into a house and say, I'm gonna use that, that, that with that dog because I, no, no, no. I, I wait until the dog shows me what he needs me to use. It's the easiest way to look at it. Uh, but yeah, you just use a leash on her spring. What size, did we, did we say what size dog? No. Uh, under 65 pounds, 2.25 millimeter, over 65, probably 3.0 millimeter. And rare, very rarely we use a 3.25 over 120 pounds. Next question. Okay, it's our last question. Yeah. So my question to you is this. Yes. When my dogs are home alone and I check on them with my new Furbo camera. Dude, the fact that they sell Furbos and they are this big of a rave kills me. Because they're so expensive. They are. And people use the treat thing and Mm -hmm. then the dog comes. Don't use the treat. Just watch them on the camera. I digress. They are all angels. They don't fight. My big Roddy leaves my little Yorkie alone. But when I'm home and trying to sit on my couch, they misbehave. Eric Parker, EP. While they play with each other, but they play rough. And when I'm holding my Yorkie, my Roddy jumps on the couch and swats him off of me like a fly. Are they fighting for my attention? No, but don't ever hold your dog away from the other dog. People, Eric Parker, by the way, my furnace is blinking. I gotta call you. I noticed that today. I'll call you today. It's the greatest. HVAC guy of all time. I'll give you his number after. So anyways, I digress again. Um, when you ever see someone walk into a dog park and hold a dog up in the air and walk in and all the dogs go nuts, I'm like, why are they jumping on me? Right? Well, it's because, yeah, you're holding them up in the air. So never hold your dog up in the air. Here's the thing though, right? Say I'm watching TV and my dog is losing their mind uh, towards each other, right? And they're freaking out. Well, I, that means whoever is the, the aggressor, not the aggressive dog, the one who's pushing the pace, I put on leash and I make him sit next to me. Now, I also have to make sure that if I have a Rottweiler who I didn't do anything with, and then I try to make him sit next to me for an hour and a half, I'm gonna be in trouble. You're gonna be in big time trouble. However, if I trained him and I did my, all my walking and all my exercises, then I just put him on leash and say, okay, you're done for right now, then I'm gonna let you go. They're clearly not doing anything wrong in a, in a mean way, or else you would know about it. It just sounds like, we're trying to hold one dog back and push the other dog away. And dogs have what's called opposition reflex. The more I push, the more he's gonna push back. That's why when a dog's pulling, you should never pull back on a dog because they just dig in more. You watch it on dogs on the harness all the time, they literally dig into the ground the more they get. So instead of pulling and pushing, leash and I start to move more sideways or I correct if need be, but don't ever hold away. That's a good question. That's a very, very good question. That's actually a phenomenal answer by me. Thank, thank you very much. That's a great question. You're so welcome. I appreciate you guys for tuning in for episode number 19 of Next Question with Vinny and Jenna Lee. I want you guys to have a great night. Um, and remember, properly trained dogs can be a human's son of a bitch. I'm sick. I screwed that up. I didn't swear the whole day. Remember, properly trained humans can be a dog's best friend. I got to tell you what. I've been comfortably <laughs> sitting in this chair the whole night. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.